Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 gives us this familiar instruction. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. We want to honor the clear teaching of Scripture in this regard, but we also want to honor the Scriptures that teach us to submit to the governing authorities God's placed over us in our city, our state, and our country. Based on the information we have gathered from our governing authorities and also from the very helpful congregational survey almost all of you completed, we have determined to begin our regathering as a congregation on Sunday, May 17th, under these parameters. We will offer two Sunday morning worship services at 9.30 and 11 o'clock. This should enable us to maintain the recommended social distancing. There will be no small groups, no kingdom kids, no youth activities. We will, however, provide preschool child care. Our preschool child care would be spread out significantly with four and five year olds upstairs in the kingdom kids space and the younger children downstairs. We ask that our families with preschool aged children attend the 930 service. This will give our volunteers the opportunity to attend the 11 o'clock service. We will have an online registration for both of our morning services. That registration will be open on the Monday before the upcoming Sunday service on our website. We'll cap registration at 80 people per service, and this will enable us to avoid having too many in attendance in either service and ensure visitors still have a place. Once our sanctuary reaches capacity of 100 people, we'll direct others who come to go to the fellowship hall for overflow. Here's some of the precautions we're going to be making to ensure everyone's safety. Our welcoming team will hold open the doors coming and going so that it'll minimize your need to touch door handles. We will not have printed worship bulletins, but we'll still provide the online worship guide you can access on your smartphone at lookoutvalley.org live. Face masks will not be mandatory, but will be available for you if you desire to have one. Every other row of pews will be roped off so that we can again maintain appropriate distancing. We will continue to serve communion on the third Sunday of every month. However, we will not be passing the communion plates. We will serve communion by coming up front to receive the elements, again, maintaining appropriate distance. We will not have a handshaking welcome time, and we will discourage any physical contact with any people who are not in your immediate family. We will have hand sanitizer stations located throughout the facility. We'll also not pass a collection plate, an offering plate, but we will have ushers stationed at the doorways at the conclusion of the service so you can drop off your tithes and offerings as you exit the auditorium. We'll continue to provide our online live streaming services so those who are unable to attend in person can still participate in our worship services. So, what can you do to help? It's the first thing, stay home when you're sick. If you're running a fever over 100.4, if you have any flu-like symptoms, stay home. Do not begin arriving for the second worship service until at least 1045 to allow the first service attendees adequate time to exit the building and the parking lot. We also ask that you work with our welcoming team members to help seat you properly. If you cough or sneeze, do so with a tissue and throw that tissue in the trash. Wash your hands often with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And here's a great big way you can help us. We will have a work day on Saturday, May 16th to prepare our facility and our grounds for regathering. For those who have cardiovascular, respiratory, or immune system issues, or others who are particularly susceptible to the virus based on your age or other health risks, it's understandable and prudent that you not attend in person at this time. At the end of the day, you must make decisions that you feel are in the best interest of protecting yourself and your family. You know, churches are not geared for social distancing, and that's why this is so difficult for all of us. We all desire to get back together as church family as quickly as possible. But we also want to make sure that we have done everything in our power to make it safe. As your pastor, I look forward to seeing you very soon.